BYD Dash the giant Chinese automaker whose acronym stands for Build Your Dreams, has big ambitions for this new seal four-door electric saloon, which looks like a home halfway between a Porsche Taycan and a Tesla Model 3. Is it just a matter of copy and paste? No, that's not very fair. You can see clear influences from the Tesla in the overall shape and the Taycan around the lights, but overall the seal is a smart looking saloon with good proportions and some nice details. At the front, there's a subtle X shape framed by headlights and low mounted LED daytime running lights, which have a wavy shape to honor the seal's aquatic name. The 19 inch alloy is finished in part black are also smart, and at the rear you get a full width light bar between the brake lights. You won't get Build Your Dreams written in chrome letters on the trunk lid. BYD is a rarity in that it is a car manufacturer that produces its own batteries, most car companies source their batteries from third-party suppliers such as LG, Cattle or Panasonic. BYD actually started as a battery manufacturer, and something like a fifth of all cell phones on sale use a BYD battery. BYD has chosen a lithium-ion phosphate LFP, battery for its cars, rather than the lithium-ion packs used by the likes of Tesla and Hyundai. LFP batteries don't hold as much charge for a given size and weight as a lithium-ion battery, but on the plus side, they're sturdier, longer-lasting, and more affordable. Seal's 82.5 kWh battery pack officially provides a range of up to 570 km on the standard rear-wheel drive design model, and up to 520 km on the more powerful all-wheel drive excellence model. Is it worth upgrading to a four-wheel drive version? Probably not. The standard design version can accelerate from 0 to 100 km per hour in 5.9 seconds thanks to the 312 horsepower engine with 360 newton meters of torque. Sure, the four-wheel drive models 530 bhp and 670 newton meters are appealing, but after you've bored your family out of the car a few times with that acceleration, you'd probably be better off with a car that still has excellent acceleration and a longer drive. Design, design. Both cars come with more or less the same equipment anyway, although the excellence gets upgraded dampers, which might be a good idea if you're a regular backcountry user. This is because Seal's firm ride, firm, not hard, can be a little uncomfortable on a washboard surface. The steering is quick but a bit light and lacks the natural feel of, say, the Polestar 2. The delivery of electricity is fast, but not very urgent in terms of EV. It doesn't deliver its full electric torque in one mighty stroke, choosing to add it to your back rather than sheer aggression. That means the SEAL has a bit more power to harness than some EVs we've driven lately. Sport mode lets out a bit more punch, but the traction control is aggressive, especially in the wet, sometimes robbing you of the full throttle attack you're looking for. Slide into the cabin and back. There's good knee and headroom, comfortable seats and Isofix child seat anchor points, plus air vents and USB sockets. This model has vegan leather and although the legroom under the front seats is a little tight, it doesn't feel claustrophobic thanks to the wide panoramic glass roof that adds to the feeling of spaciousness. A large 15.6-inch touchscreen in the center of the dash does the usual BYD trick of switching from landscape to portrait orientation and back again at the touch of a button. It's a bit of a trick, you'll probably pick your preferred layout and leave it at that, but it's worth noting that if you're wearing polarized sunglasses in portrait mode, it can be difficult to see the screen properly. It's disappointing that the air conditioning controls are on screen, lacking proper physical controls, but the overall layout of the on-screen menus and software is decent, even if, as with multiple screens, it can be time-consuming. Distracting pushes and presses to get to the item you want. Up top, there's a proper driver display behind the steering wheel, so unlike the Tesla Model 3 and Smart Number 3, you don't have to keep looking at the center of the car to check your speed. Black interiors look more subdued and may wear a little better in the long run. That pale blue seat upholstery looks like it could easily be spotted, as does the matching suede-like material on the dashboard and doors. The overall quality feels incredibly good. 
though, and all the major touch points, from the wheel to the physical buttons and center console, feel expensive. There are two wireless phone charging pads, plus two USB and one card slot, as well as Bluetooth connectivity. Strangely, Apple CarPlay doesn't work unless the phone is connected via cable. Navigation is only visible on the main screen, but there are no secondary directions on the instrument panel or head-up display, which is also on this car. It would take a lot of text to go through all the functions available from the center screen, from the DAB radio, it kept cutting out while driving, so I resorted to regular radio to enjoy the excellent 12 speaker sound system, cabin pollution filters, includes PM 2.5, configurable display settings, smart charging, vehicle information and settings, etc.